Hello, my name is Thomas Beale. I'm the CTO of Ocean Informatics and one of the architects of OpenAir. This is part 6 of the ADO 1.5 training course. We're going to talk about the rules section of archetypes. Yes, I know, in the previous section I promised that we would get on to componentization and archetype slots and specialization, but we need to just finish the last part of single archetype constraints to understand what they can do before we get onto those uh, very important and interesting aspects. This presentation will look at the requirements and also the major uses for rules. Let's just have a look at a normal archetype. That's our old friend the APGAR st score archetype shown in its technical form with the classes and properties down the left hand side. The question we have here is knowing everything we know about ADL so far are there any limitations? What can't we do? Is it enough to do all the things we need? Something to think about. All of those parts marked on the picture are constraints uh, which are limited to just the node that they're stated on. So the constraints in red on the right hand side, the first one for example, one to star unordered on the events attribute of the history class, that can only be about that attribute. Uh, and the same is true for the other two constraints that are marked on the diagram. What if we wanted to write a constraint that included a relationship between two or more nodes. For example, in the APGAR archetype we'd like to say heart rate score plus muscle uh, tone plus 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 breathing equals total. That's how APGAR works. What if we wanted to be able to state that? That would require being able to somehow mention the uh, five input parts of the score as well as the total. Similarly, in body mass index, we might want to write some uh, formula for BMI. The standard one is weight divided by height squared, potentially with a constant included depending on what kind of units you're using. For smoking, we might want to have a relationship that says if uh, the data point for tobacco user has as its answer that the person is a current tobacco user, then another part of the archetype that records details is required, uh, but only in that situation, otherwise it's optional. So in general, we have a need to be able to write statements including arithmetic, comparison and Boolean operators, including the existential and universal quantifier, and to refer to elements of the main structure. Now we can do this by paths, that's one of the things that you've seen that's built into archetypes. So let's just jump right to the example of APGAR. You can see there uh, in the tool not only the main APGAR archetype structure but also an expression uh, which is exactly the one we were talking about before. Total equals heart rate plus respiratory effort plus muscle tone plus reflex irritability plus skin color and that's called score sum. The expression tree is also visual, visualized by the tool and you can see uh, down the left what for some people would be uh, a familiar formalism it's just a normal mathematical expression tree with operators at the nodes and uh, either constants or values from the model on the leaves so if you work your way through it you will see that it says that the there's an equality between the total and the sum of heart rate and another sum uh, which consists of uh, respiratory effort and another sum and so on and you can work your way down. So this is the basic concept of being able to write an expression, a mathematical expression implicating numerous uh, data points from an archetype. There's the ADL, it's using the old uh, ADL 1.4 keyword invariant. In ADL 1.5 this will become rules. Oh, that's what's expected anyway. Uh, the expression has a tag, score sum, and you can see that 
it's uh, a summation of five things making up the first path. This ADL expression actually is when it's parsed and converted into AOM objects it's actually used to generate the highlighted expression down below. So the expression you see down below isn't actually a typed in natural language expression, it's actually determined by processing of that ADL expression. That tells you that it would be possible to write tools that also enable an author to input such an expression uh, using uh, friendly means rather than having to do anything as difficult as typing out those long paths. Let's have a look at body mass, mass index. You can see the top part of uh, the tool is showing the uh, main data points. So we have weight, height, slash length, uh, length for, for infants, uh, and then body mass index. So those three first elements. Down the bottom we have the BMI formula. This is another uh, assertion. And you can see it says body mass index equals weight on height slash length now that you know that it's been actually extracted from the model you can see why the height slash length isn't a mathematical expression it's just a, a lexical expression taken from that second element uh, to the power of two and on the left bottom you can see again uh, another mathematical expression tree for those who don't normally work in such formalisms don't worry too much it just proves that the compiler has correctly uh, parsed the expression and you can see here what it what its real meaning is in terms of uh, a formula there's a result variable and two input variables so we can consider that statement down there to be uh, a formula that relates some of the data points in the archetype there's the ADL for that and it shows what you might now expect it uses those paths to access the data points in uh, the archetype and two mathematical operators uh, the divide division and uh, the exponent operator you'll notice that the paths actually end in slash value slash magnitude so the typing uh, that is the reference model typing and uh, the operators are known to be correct. In other words, the first path any in slash value slash magnitude is known to be a real number and so are the other two items and that enables the use of those operators. Uh, if if, it, if it, they had been, for example, Boolean amounts, Boolean uh, variables in the archetype, then of course the division operator wouldn't be allowed and the compiler would find the question here is what is the status of this statement, this expression we've just seen? Is it an assertion? Is it a method of calculating the result? So the semantics uh, proposed in ADA 1.5 is that the meaning of one of these expressions is that of an assertion. In other words, the need to state a required formula in a normative neutral form. Now, for a given formula, there may be many alternatives. If you look up mean arterial pressure on Wikipedia, for example, you'll see examples of that. So what we're doing here is stating the one which uh, the clinical modelers have decided is the appropriate one for uh, that, that archetype. The algorithm for efficiently performing the computation is in some cases something completely different. If you have a formula that includes derivatives and integrals, uh, most likely the computation method doesn't look anything like the formula. There are probably other examples as well where uh, reasonable uh, approximations can be made to a formula uh, for the, p the purpose of performing the computation. So this is another reason why we state a formula in uh, a neutral form rather than jumping straight to some sort of computer code. Now that isn't to say that the uh, formula couldn't be used to do computing. 
it is formal, it's typed, and it may be that in further development of ADA 1.5 that's what uh, it's used to do in some cases at least. It's expected that at least some users of archetypes when they've been converted to templates may want to state uh, a concrete computation, so maybe a function available from a library in uh, a computer programming language. Uh, that's most likely to be done in a close to runtime form of the archetype, that is in the post template generation phase. There can be subtle issues with uh, devising formula that actually do what's intended. For example, the BMI formula depends on the units. We can uh, look at the, the formulae as published in the imperial form, which is the first one, and in the metric form, which is the second one. And that, those two formulae give you answers which are the same so that you can make the same comparisons no matter whether the input variables are in feet or inches. But it does mean that the formulae are different. So a realistic archetype would define potentially two formulae and it might even try to reuse one formula in the other because you can see that the first one is simply the second one, that is the metric one, multiplied by a constant. Let's look at another need something we can call conditional existence. The requirement here is to make the inclusion of some items dependent on the runtime value of others. So in this example here we're looking at the substance use summary archetype. This is an archetype that contains data points that physicians would use to record uh, the tobacco, alcohol, other drugs usage of patients. You can see uh, there's a data point called usage status and it's a coded text and, the, and there's a, a collection of codes current user, formula, former regular user, former occasional user and never used. Below that is a group of data points under consumption summary so all of those uh, items you can see for method of use, date commenced etc. So the question here is if that uh, value for usage status is in fact current user, you might want to say that the consumption summary part becomes obligatory. And to do that we would have uh, an expression such as ex usage status, this is just extracted and uh, visualized in natural language, but usage status matches current user uh, implies exists consumption summary. The mathematical version of that is on the left and you can see uh, the implication operator and the first uh, sub operand is the familiar matches symbol and it's saying that if the usage status uh, value matches current user which is a term then the it's implied mathematically the existence of the consumption summary data point group. In ADL that looks like this, so it's actually perfectly simple. So the question is what do ADL and AOM need to support this concept of rules? As you've probably guessed it requires a sort of mini language that includes operators, paths which enable us to reference elements in the main model, constants, a concept of precedence uh, amongst the operators and also the ability to override precedence with parentheses. Potentially built-in variables, an obvious one would be something like current date. Uh, functions, which there's any number of uh, trigonometric and other kinds of special functions which uh, eventually are most likely going to be required. Also potentially external data access, for example to a data point that isn't in the current archetype that affects, let's say, is required for a conditional expression. So essentially we're talking about a first order predicate logic language. It turns out that XPath or a subset of XPath is quite a good model to follow. If you go into the OpenAir wiki you'll find uh, a notation called APath which was one implementation of this concept. The ADL and AOM model of these expressions will probably 
uh, as, it, as they get finalized, borrow from this work. Defined so far are the following operators that you can see on the screen. These are from the uh, ADL 1.5 specification. Uh, anybody who understands mathematics will understand those. If you don't, probably the first couple might seem a bit mysterious, uh, but it's relatively easy to build a tool that enables these operators to be made comprehensible to anybody in, in natural language form. Uh, Built-in variables which have so far been uh, devised include current date, current time, current date, time, current year, current month. There will probably be a few more, mostly uh, to do with time. There's a proposal for uh, being able to access external data from other archetypes. The current version of this proposal is a uh, query expression which enables a resource, you can see in the example below, a resource called EHR to be queried for uh, uh, for a query in that resource to be accessed, so a date of birth query or has diagnosis query, and for if that query has arguments, for those arguments to be uh, supplied as well. There may be better ways of doing this, and this part is still under development. From the AOM 1.5 spec, that's the current model. Uh, as I've implied, this is not completely finished and it may change as uh, further experience is gained with using more complex rules. The essential uh, aim we have is to finalize it in the simplest but most powerful form that's possible. Things that aren't well enough understood yet probably won't be included, so unless a very simple, clean and obvious form of external querying is devised, uh, it may not be included eventually. So, in summary, archetypes provide support for defining multivariable relationships via the rules section, so we can do things like write mathematical expressions, such as score sums, body mass index. We can also state conditional existence, so capture smoking details if uh, the, sm the patient is indeed a current smoker. The next thing we said is that uh, the expressions in the rules sections are considered to be assertions, i.e. normative statements of required relationships, not the calculation method. And there are two reasons, as we said, for this. One is that there can be multiple, even competing formulae, uh, maybe a number of possible approximations. And the second is that there are different calculation methods available also the calculation methods may in some cases not resemble at all the formula being used. Computational methods to do the actual work might be added by bindings to concrete language functions in uh, operational template derivatives. At the moment that's still a question. And there are some details being finalized including that question of external data access. As usual the usual references in case you're interested to go and see what the state of the work is. Thank you for your attention and hope to see you next time.